We're driving a 2023 Honda CRV. Coming up, we're going to explain all the ways that this CRV makes the 2008 CRV that we own look like a pile of crap. But first, information explosion. The Honda CRV is all new for 2023. Let's begin with interior. There's a lot of things that pop out at first. There's this thing that looks like a tiny honeycomb that adds some texture. There's this very unusual, but now becoming totally common to Honda, the uh, treatment with the vest. Bees and more bees. <laughs> exactly. By the way, when we discover that Honda's president is just a swarm of bees in a trench coat, will you be surprised? I will not. <laughs> I like the treatment that they give to the HVAC controls. It looks like it's neural metal, but it's just plastic, but it makes it look fancy. Yeah, it's got a textural quality when you t uh, touch it, and then when you turn it, there's a little click. That's nice. Oh, 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 and when you move the vents, Little click. Little clicks. I like that they reserve the shiny black plastic for parts of the vehicle you are not likely to touch because the biggest issue with it is that it collects fingerprints and dust. So there's this large area in front for your phones. There's um, a little nook here, which worked great for my glasses. There's lots of little helpful storage compartments. They're small, but there's that's not small. <laughs> I like the angle. She's looking at the uh, center console. Uh, <laughs> there's a pretty good sized bin there uh, is what we're talking about. I think it's all very smartly arranged, very simply arranged too. Very easy to use, a lot of practical spots. If I have a complaint, it's that um, the lower you touch, the harder it gets. And uh, if you uh, scratch here, you got, um, you know, it's pretty plasticky in the uh, lower portions of the interior. Countering that point, uh, for a car that you might own for a decade, and as people who own a 2008 CRV that we got used in 2015, so uh, we're coming up on eight years of owning that thing, when you get child vomit on the uh, lower part of the car, that'll uh, be uh, pretty easy to clean up. Isn't that right, kiddo? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> As for space, I fit very comfortably in the second row behind my preferred front seating position. And there's a bunch of detents too, so you can really dial in your comfort uh, preference uh, with your seat back angle. I also like that an adult can sit in the middle seat if needed because there's enough head space and a fairly flat floor. As for cargo space, there are 39.3 cubic feet behind the second row, which is really quite generous, especially for a compact SUV. The cargo space has a two height load floor, so you can either have it in the upper position for a fairly flat slide in or lower if you need just that extra little bit of space. And then you've got that 60-40 split fold function, so you can cram a ton of stuff in your CRV. Comparing this to our CRV, I think this makes a much stronger stylistic statement versus um, our kind of you know straight up pragmatic uh, 2008 CRV. Kiddo, how is it climbing in and out of this Honda CRV? Yeah, and what about um, getting a car seat installed, sweetie? The door opened very wide, which was helpful, and the latch points are totally exposed. So if you have kids, it's awesome. If you don't, it might be a little bit of an eyesore. <laughs> As for safety, the NHTSA and the IIHS have yet to rate the 2023 Honda CRV, but I would be shocked if it performed poorly. I imagine it's gonna do quite well. As for active safety, Honda Sensing comes standard on every CRV they sell, and that's their active uh, driver assist suite. So you've got lane key assist, automatic emergency braking, full speed adaptive cruise control, blind spot warning, and 10 airbags, all standard. The active safety is something that I really wish we had in our CRV. Yeah, that extra safety net of knowing that the vehicle might see the thing that you're about to hit before you see the thing. When um, you're not with me, that would be very helpful. <laughs> in total family, what do we think? Is the Honda CRV family friendly? Family friendly. Most definitely family friendly. Rear window test. Is that it? No. Oh. Okay, high five anyway. <laughs>
armrest test. I'm driving in a comfortable eight and four, shuffle steering down the mountain, and uh, as I uh, put my arms out, I have a pretty easy access to the inboard and outboard armrest. So the inboard is a little bit squishier, and I like that outboard. I feel like there could be more padding. I'm hitting that plastic pretty early. I'm gonna go 90% inboard, 70% outboard. Hey, would you like to see more videos like this where we review cars as a family? plus the occasional helicopter adventure. If so, you're always welcome to subscribe. Style! With this generation CRV, Honda seems to have embraced squareness or maybe a more rugged aesthetic. I think that's a direct direction that the entire automotive industry is going with the SUVs. Uh, it's a little less swoopy and sleek and a little more like assertive. Not that you're ever gonna take this thing uh, off-road in a major way, but I think that's kind of the vibe they're going for. Uh, what do you think? I really like that its overall shape is very square because I find that appealing, but there are lots of indentations in it, like up front near the headlight, it gets very swoopy in an appealing way. And I like that they've continued the B trim from the interior on the exterior. There's kind of like a flattened version of it on the front and on the back, there's a teeny tiny version that trims the rear bumper. And if you put this next to our CRV, it looks lower, wider, longer, all of those things that visually make you think, oh, this might be a more like secure driving vehicle. It might just cling to the road in a way that perhaps our uh, somewhat narrower looking CRV cannot. I'll also add that our tester is painted radiant red metallic, which costs $395. And this is as close as a modern CRV gets to the classic burgundy of our old ass CRV. What do you think? Do you like the look of the Honda CRV? If so, if no, tell us in the comment section. In motion! Driving the CRV on the freeway, it immediately jumped out to me that the suspension is very settled. When you hit a bump, there's no after bump floatiness. It immediately just calms down. It absorbs and then it calms. Absorb, calm, absorb, calm. It's like it's parenting you around the road. <laughs> If you're a parent, you'll understand what that means. <laughs> At high speed on the freeway, it's quiet and stable. And when driving, I get a very similar feel to uh, what we experienced in uh, some of the Mazdas we've driven recently, including the uh, CX-30 and the Mazda 3, which is, it's not here to be sporty, but it's here to be stable and confident and, and reassuring. And when you go around a corner, it just kind of keeps its track. And uh, I find it very confidence inspiring for drivers who are just trying to get through their day. Drivers like you. As for power, the CRV is offered in two forms. There's the gasoline version, which we're driving, then there's also a hybrid. I think the hybrid would be the better choice for off the line acceleration because you have that prompt electric torque and it does make an overall higher horsepower number. Now we're driving the gasoline version and as I let this CRV go by because they are um, everywhere, I'm gonna floor it and see how it goes. Floored. We ha. Okay, two things happened there. Number one, uh, the engine restart took a moment to come alive. And then there was a little bit of a fumble as we started to um, get the uh, uh, engine into its power band because the CVT transmission, which is redundant, yes, continuously variable transmission, uh, takes a moment to get into revs. We're gonna dive into more about that when Evie drives, but the quick gist is that um, off the line acceleration isn't great, but if I floor it now, we Revs come up reasonably quickly and it has um, you know, respectable pull. On the rare occasion you might find yourself going off-road or driving through snow, you got about eight inches of ground clearance and I think for mountain living, the CRV would be perfectly fine. Oh, and we do have a couple of drive modes. Now we're in normal, now we're in econ. Drive mode, you won't let me go into econ? Weird. Oh, now <laughs> you, you will. Have, you have to stop driving like <laughs> first. <laughs> No dice. <laughs> I might use snow if we're driving in the snow, um, but normally normal will be fine. Normally. All right, those are my driving thoughts, but what does Evie think? Evie's driving. Tell me, how's your seating position? This seat is very adjustable, and so that was super helpful. I was able to raise it up. There's a lot of flexibility in the seat. With a comfortable seating position, that does beg the question, any visibility issues? The only visibility issue is over my left shoulder, the B pillar kind of blocks my view, but that's common for me because I'm a little bit short and I tend to sit closer to the steering wheel. Yeah, besides that one little issue, I think you got pretty good sized windows. That quarter window is pretty functional back there. Um, for me, I found visibility to be quite good. <gasps> coyote. coyote! Hello, Coyote. Oh yeah, I saw it. Oh, it's beautiful. 
When steering the CRV, how do you find the steering efforts? The steering efforts are light and light and manageable with good body. <laughs> I was going to say light and manageable. That must be all that shampoo commercial programming. Okay, so this right here is a uh, common scenario power off the line where you've got kind of a blind uh, situation over there. How's that feel? That feels good. How did it feel? immediately leaving from a stop. It hesitated a bit. <laughs> yes, it's not as pronounced as it was in the HRV, mm -mm. but in situations like this where you have a blind uh, intersection and you want to get out very quickly in case a car is coming, um, that's not necessarily the CRV's strongest suit. It does raise an interesting dichotomy which uh, popped up in the HRV video, which is that, well, is it quick or is it not quick? Mm -hmm. It depends on how you're using it is the answer. There's some nuance there. All right, I think we've talked about the powertrain enough. I'm getting back in the driver's seat. Overall, I think Honda really knows its customers. They're not necessarily seeking thrills. They just want to feel confident and comfortable when they drive, and the CRV delivers that uh, in healthy dollops. Language got weird there, but I think you know what I mean. Moving onward to emotion factor. By driving demeanor and style, I don't think the Honda CRV is the most emotive compact SUV you can buy. However, I think there is something to the um, emotional confidence you get with making a choice that is very, very defendable. For example, we bought our CRV back uh, when our daughter arrived, and uh, it has served us faithfully for that entire time. And I honestly don't think now, based on its resale value, there's any reason we would ever sell it. What we could get out of it versus its function, and I think there's something nice about that, knowing like we bought a thing and it's just going to always do its job. I should have held out for a couple. I liked. <laughs> you don't like burgundy? <laughs> it's classic CRV. I hate burgundy. <laughs> and now we've got it for life. Burgundy for life. <laughs> Kid, I have taught you well. <laughs> that makes me so happy. What do you guys think? Is there an emotion factor to the 2023 Honda CRV? If you're feeling emotionally drawn to buy a Honda CRV of your very own, I'm guessing you're going to need to sell your current car first. Click the Kelly Blue Book listing link in the description below if you'd like to see what your current car is worth or how much you should spend on your 2023 Honda CRV. Moving forward to remarks. Remark number one, infotainment. A seven inch screen comes standard, but if you move up to the Sport Touring Hybrid or the EXL trim like we're driving here, you get this nine inch screen. And the, on the seven inch screen, you get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto standard. And then when you move to this larger screen, you get both of those things, but they are wireless and you get this um, Qi wireless um, charging pad. There's a home button and a back button on the side, a tiny little volume button, which does its job admirably. They also got a little track forward and back switch here, which is kind of cool. And I like the way the icon... <laughs> I mean, not objectively cool, but you know. <laughs> it's useful. I find the functions you use most often being close at hand and buttons is really helpful for driving for me and keeping my eyes on the road. And I'll mention something we noticed in the HRV we also noticed here, which is that the steering wheel controls, these switches like for volume and uh, using the uh, cruise control, I wish it stood out a little bit more. It'd be yeah. easier for me to grip with my uh, cold mountain fingers. Oh, those cold <laughs> mountain fingers. Why are you laughing, sweetie? <laughs> no reason. <laughs> it also makes a click. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy's having a, a, a moment where she thinks, thinks everything's very funny. Would you like to explain to the class why no, you're laughing? No, no. So back to the infotainment. I like that the icons are color coded because that's so handy for seeing them out of the corner of your eye. Uh, mommy? Yes. Are you trying to change the best subject? Yes. <laughs> very observant <laughs> child. <laughs> you're getting too clever. Very clever. One other note about the infotainment system. The one thing I um, think uh, would really make the whole thing better is a 360 degree camera system. They do offer it in the pilot. Um, that's the kind of technology that I hope winds its way down to the CRV at some point. All right, let's talk about engine choices. 
The standard engine is a 1.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine, makes respectable horsepower and is decently uh, economical. And now Honda does this in a weird way, but um, the sports trim and the sports touring trims both get the hybrid powertrain, even though we're driving the EXL and that's one of the fancier trims and it has the standard engine. Nonetheless, if you go with the hybrid, you get 204 total horsepower and a big bump in fuel economy in the city. For fuel, both the hybrid and the standard gasoline engine run on 87 octane, which will save you money at the pump, and tow is minuscule, 1,500 for the gas engine and 1,000 pounds for the hybrid. Sweetie? Yes. Can I make a trim recommendation? You sure can. Our trim recommendation is based on which trim gives you the essential features you'd regret not buying, but at the lowest possible price. By our normal recommendation standards, the base EX trim would be totally fine. It has dual zone climate control, heated front seats, a driver's seat with 10-way adjustment, including lumbar support, and smart key access that automatically locks the vehicle when you walk away. That's all the stuff you need, but it's only $1,300 to jump to the Sport Hybrid trim. That Sport Hybrid is nearly identical to the EX trim that I recommended, but you get more horsepower and a big jump in fuel economy. Depending on gas prices, you should be able to recoup that extra cost before too long. Plus, the Sport Hybrid looks cooler, adds roof rails, and gets a bonus pair of rear USB ports. So if it were my money, I'd go with the Sport Hybrid. As for competitors, we've got things like the Kia Sportage, boy that's stylish, the Subaru Forester, boy people love that, and the Toyota RAV4, boy people buy the, a lot of those things, especially in prime form, uh, which is their plug-in hybrid version, and if you're curious what we thought about the Toyota RAV4 Prime, you can click up here. Did we miss any remarks? If so, tell us in the comment section. Synopsis! In thinking about the essence of the Honda CRV, it is so supremely practical and such an obvious correct choice, but maybe it's not like the flashy one that pulls your emotional heartstrings so much. To me, it is the Ben Stiller character in the movie Reality Bites of compact SUVs. I know we're getting super esoteric. It's like a 25-year-old movie. What are we doing? It was uh, Ben Stiller's directorial debut. The point of the movie is you're supposed to want Winona Ryder to get with the Ethan Hawke character. When I watched the movie, I was like, I uh, want him or her to get with Ben Stiller. That guy is so much more pulled together than the Ethan Hawke character. It's kind of like watching Star Wars and thinking that Palpatine guys really got some good ideas. <laughs> I bet middle-aged people go for Ben Stiller. Watching it now, you'd be like, Ethan Hawke is going to make a terrible, emotionally unstable father. Yeah, it seems good at the time. But Probably the won't bring in a good income. If that movie kept running for another 25 years, you'd <laughs> see what a bad choice that is. I mean, I married a janitor who was in a band, so... <laughs> Every time you need a toilet fixed around the house... <laughs> doesn't even need tools. Does, I, I don't know how he does it. You made a wise choice. Family, uh, I think we've done a good job talking about Reality Bites <laughs> and reviewing the Honda CRV. May I have a five? And a five. Pew. And you can get your high five. Ah. Hi, buddy.